We live in a world where everyone has been talking about automations and how automation will change the world. But to automate simple to complex tasks, we need to design the automation first, and this is where the RPA developers come into the picture. So, hi all, this is Sahiti on behalf of Edureka, and I welcome you to this session on how to become an RPA developer. In this session, guys, we'll focus on the basic steps that you can follow to become an RPA developer. So if you're someone who is looking forward to change your domain or upskill your career to become an RPA developer, then this is the right platform that you've come on. So on that note, let's look into the agenda for today's session. So the agenda for today's session is as you can see on my screen. We'll be covering first who is an RPA developer and then we'll be talking about the job trends of an RPA developer. After that, we'll look into the RPA developer's salary and then I'll show you a basic job description of an RPA developer. Once that is done, we'll look into the skills required to become an RPA developer, and then I'll show you the roadmap to become an RPA developer. So, on that note, let's get started with the first topic for today's session that is, who is an RPA developer? Now, I'm sure everybody who has landed on this video has an idea about robotic process automation, but for those who do not have an idea about robotic process automation, then let me tell you that RPA or robotic process automation is a technology wherein you have to automate the manual tasks using the RPA tools present in the market. Now this task could either be a simple task or a complex task. So all the business processes are simple to complex tasks which you automate using a simple process and an RPA tool is basically robotic process automation. So RPA developers are those designers who design these automation tasks with hands-on experience in the top tools present in the market. Now when I say top tools present in the market, there are mainly three tools which are very popular in today's market that is UiPath, Blue Prism and Automation Anywhere. Now you as an RPA developer or you as a person who started learning RPA can explore any of these tools and get a hands-on experience in these tools. Apart from this, the RPA developers also work for startups to hyper growth companies and are responsible for designing the automation based on the client's requirement. Now, once the automation is designed and is ready to be rolled out into the production, an RPA developer also needs to make sure that the designed automation is achieving the desired results. In the case where the designed automation fails to achieve the desired goals, the automation goes back into the RPA lifecycle and then again it is built. So if I have to summarize who is an RPA developer for you guys, then RPA developer is someone who has good hands-on experience in the top RPA tools and understands how to create or design an automation. Now the automation design could be based on the client's requirements or maybe based on the company's requirement itself. And it could be either a simple automation or a complex automation. Apart from that, an RPA developer must also have a good understanding about the different stages of RPA lifecycle. And in case if there's any issue found in the RPA lifecycle of a bot, then the RPA developer must be able to understand or must be able to debug the issue very easily. So that was about who is an RPA developer, guys. So if you're from a quality analyst background or a testing background or a software engineer or an application developer, then RPA developer is definitely a career role which you can go for, right? So on that note, let me just take you through the job trends of an RPA developer. So as you can see on my screen guys, the number of jobs of RPA developers in United Kingdom is increasing on a large scale. So with that, we can definitely determine that, you know, RPA developers career opportunities will only shoot through the roof where both startups and well established companies such as IBM, Infosys, KPMG are offering lucrative salaries to RPA developers. Not only this, but according to Gartner, it is estimated that around a total of 2.4 billion US dollars is estimated to be spent in the field of RPA by 2022 and also 85% of large organizations will have deployed RPA in some of the other forms. So it's an obvious fact that you know all the industries are looking for professionals who can easily adapt the RPA technology as quickly as possible and automate the manual tasks. So on that note, we can understand that you know the RPA jobs are going to definitely increase and then all the simple to complex tasks will be automated and companies nowadays are looking for professionals who understand how to design an automation and speed up the processes. So now that you know the job vacancies are available for an RPA developer, let me take you to the salary trends of an RPA developer so that you can understand what will be your pay if you shift your career to an RPA developer. So let's start with the next topic for today's session that is the RPA developer's salary. Now before I talk about the salary of an RPA developer, 
Let me tell you that the salary of an RPA developer can vary on various parameters, but I will discuss the salary based on few parameters only in this session. But yes, if you want a detailed understanding about the various of the parameters on how the salary differs for an RPA developer, then you can refer to my session on the RPA developer salary. But for this session, I'm just going to talk about a single parameter that is the job profile. So based on the job profiles related to RPA developers, I'll tell you the basic or the medium salary expected. So according to indeed.com on an average an RPA developer can expect a salary of 5,53,000 in India and $92,000 in USA. Apart from being an RPA developer as I was mentioning there are various also other positions. So let's look into the salary of various other job roles related to the field of robotic process automation or an RPA developer. So let's talk about India first. So according to indeed.com. The following are the job roles as you can see on my screen and their expected salaries. So an RPA process analyst can expect around 5,48,000 per annum. An automation engineer or an automation developer can expect a salary of 5,90,000. A senior RPA developer can expect around 7,69,000 and an RPA solutions architect can expect around 10,11,000. Finally, an RPA lead can expect around 11,26,000. So that's a huge amount of money guys. Similarly, if you look into the same roles in USA, then an RPA process analyst can expect around $72,000. An automation engineer or an automation developer can expect around $90,000. A senior RPA developer can expect around $98,000 and an RPA solutions architect can expect around 1 lakh US dollars and an RPA lead can expect around 1 lakh 23,000 dollars. So again guys, there's a huge amount of money for any career role. So I would say if you're looking forward to become an RPA developer, then this is the right time that you start your career in RPA. So now that I've spoken so much about you know who is an RPA developer, the job vacancies, the salaries, let me just take you through a sample job description of an RPA developer so that you understand the skills which you must acquire before your interview. So on that note, let's start with the next topic for today's session. That is the job description. So when I started my research about the skill set of an RPA developer, I went through a couple of job descriptions on platforms like Glassdoor and Indeed to check what exactly the top tier companies look for in an RPA developer. So, this is the sample description that I've come up with for an RPA developer, which comprises of almost all the skills that are required by all the top tier companies, right? So, if you observe in the sample job description, it clearly says that you know you need top notch skills in .NET, C hash, and web scripting. You need hands on experience in the top tools. You need solid understanding of good documentation skills. You must have the ability to conceptualize a business process from a workflow diagram to an automated solution. You must have aggressive problem diagnosis and creative problem solving skills. You should have basic knowledge of SQL databases. Apart from that, you should also have strong code review skills and must have exposure to test driven developments. You should be proficient in troubleshooting and handling security measures and system analysis. You should also have excellent communication and analytic skills with the ability to present technical details to the clients in technical and non technical backgrounds. And you should also have a good exposure to design and define enterprise level application architecture and evaluate the designed automation. So, with this job description, I hope you've got a basic understanding about what exactly companies expect from an RPA developer and what skills you require to become an RPA developer. To make it easier for you, I've again listed down the skills required for an RPA developer. So let's move forward with the next topic for today's session. That is the skills required for an RPA developer. So as you might have seen in the job description, an RPA developer must be able to understand the client's requirements and design the automations based on those requirements and the IT standards. So some of the most common skills required for an RPA developer are as you can see on my screen. You need hands on experience in the top RPA tools like UiPath, Blue Prism, and Automation Anywhere. When I say hands on experience, you must work on these tools. You must understand how to design an automation, how to understand the client's requirements in, from a documentation, build it to a flowchart diagram, and finally design the automation. You should have strong problem and analytical skills because you have to understand a simple to a complex problem. And trust me, guys, when I say an RPA solution, it's just not an if else loop. It can become very complex based on the client's requirements and how you design the automation. Apart from that, you need constant communication with other business partners to develop and deploy their ideas. Now, this is required to ensure that there's a clear establishment of what can be created with what time frame and what are the requirements. 
So when you're an RPA developer, you work with a team of other developers and you must have an idea about what is the client requirement? What is the time frame given and what automation can be designed based on the client's requirement and the time frame and how it can be delivered? Not only this, but you need good knowledge of RPA life cycles and how to produce the automation. So I'm not going to go into the depth of this topic because this is quite a complex skill that is required for an RPA developer. So if you want to know the different stages of an RPA life cycle, then you can refer to my session on RPA life cycle. Apart from that, an RPA developer also needs an exposure to SQL databases and must have an understanding about how to design technical specification documents for the RPA projects. So for any project that you work on, you need a proper technical specification document because you have to put in all the factors and the functionalities for your project like the basic client requirements and then what you require for the project. What is the time frame given the other technical specification like you know the features of the RPA project what tool has been used how many bots are deployed in production where will it be deployed how will it be deployed and so on. Now after the skill you also need an experience with analysis design and implementation of the process. Because as an RPA developer, you must have the skill to understand the business technical and non technical requirements and the backgrounds and deliver the automation solution. You should also be proficient in coding skills in .NET, C hash and visual basic scripting. Well, I would say this is not mandate because you know RPA tools offer drag and drop functionalities and you do not need any programming knowledge to just design an automation solution. But if you work at a senior level for an RPA developer, then you must have a basic understanding about these coding languages because then you can understand how these tools work at the back end. So then you can understand how the automated scripts are created at the back end because in front end you just have to use the drag and drop functionalities provided by these tools and then you can design the automation. So I would say it's not mandate that you know you have good programming knowledge about .NET, C hash and BB scripting, but if you do have a programming knowledge about these, then that would definitely make you stand out in the crowd. Now this was all about the basic skills of an RPA developer, but if you're at a senior level or let's say at the lead level, then I would say getting certified by ITIL, TOGAF, COVID, PMP, Prince2, Lean Six Sigma will definitely add on to your team management. So if you're already an RPA developer, then you can just add on to your skills by getting yourself certified from any of these organizations. But if you're just getting started with RPA and then if you want to become an RPA developer, then the skills that I've just mentioned before this point are definitely required to become an RPA developer. So now that I've told you so much about you know who is an RPA developer, the job vacancies, salaries and the skills required. Let me take you through a roadmap on how to become an RPA developer. Now as you might have understood by now an RPA developers journey starts with the very first step of understanding the clients requirements. So you have to learn to analyze the business processes and design the automations around it by understanding the client's requirement. And once you understand the client's requirement and come up with the technical specifications document and you have an idea about you know what are the requirements, what is expected, what is the time frame and what can be delivered. Then comes the next learning phase where you have to develop an understanding about which process can be automated and which cannot be. Now let me tell you over here that you know based on all the clients requirements. All the tasks cannot be automated. Only few of the processes can be automated. So you as an RPA developer or you as a learner who wants to become an RPA developer must understand about which process can be automated and which cannot be. Once you have a clear understanding about which process cannot be automated and which can be, then the next step to learn is to get a hands on experience in the top available tools present in the market today. Right, so when I say get hands on experience in the top tools, it's not necessary that you know you explore each and every tool. It's completely based on your perspective and your comfort zone and also which tool will benefit you the most. So I would say when you're starting to learn a tool, figure out which tool will work out the best for you and then get a hands on experience in that. After that, you have to start implementing the automation solutions which you might have designed. Right, so whatever that you've designed and mentioned in the process document has to come on the tool and then you have to start designing the automation solution. And once you design the automation solution, you have to test your automations. So after your automations are successfully working, you can deploy it onto the production. But over here, I would like to tell you one thing. Do not just stick to one automation at a big scale. Start with small, small automations or I would say start with small tasks which can be automated. And then gradually once you have an idea about the ways functionalities provided by the tool that you're working on and the processes that you can build on then you can go forward and build large automations. 
So on that note guys we come to an end to this particular session. I hope you have understood how to become an RPA developer and then if you have any further queries related to the session then you can comment down in the comment section below. Until then that's all from my side today. I hope you found the session informative. Thank you and have a great day.